Hey guys, welcome back to Torque Power Video. I recently picked up a project. It's going to be a race car. Um, really, it's just going to be an off-road beater that I'm going to enter in the stock class at uh, Carolina right. Crawlers uh, Off-Road Park. Um, so I'm missing the key for it. So it was cheaper for me to buy just one of these little um, switch panels kits for it than it was to just buy a whole new ignition switch with a key or, or have another key made. Anyway, whatever. Um, I know a lot of you guys might want to use one of these things in your project vehicle, um, but you, you see this and it looks nice and neat and easy, and then some people see all of this and then they get intimidated. Well, I'm going to break it down for you exactly how to wire this thing up, what we're doing while we're wiring it up, tell you how I'm doing mine, but the way I don't recommend you do it for yours. So stay tuned. Okay, this is what you'll get. You'll get the switch panel and everything's already going to be assembled. There will be no wiring on it, but you will get three pieces of wire. Um, I think you'll get this yellow one, this black one, and another red one, maybe. Anyway, um, I didn't use the red one in my case, but it'll also come with this relay. And this relay... Um, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not really the best thing in the world because, I mean, it's not weather resistant at all and the wires are only like 18 gauge. So there's only so much of a load you can put on an 18 gauge wire. So we're going to set this off to the side right now, but let me show you what all these wires do. But let's start from the absolute beginning to where nothing's on it. All right, this is the way you'll receive it. This is your main power switch. You flip this up and it'll energize these three switches and your start button. Now, the way I'm going to do it for mine is I'm going to wire the start switch direct. I'm going to wire it away from or out of this circuit right here because my reasoning for that is that this is going to be an off-road only vehicle. And if the motor ever gets flooded, gets water in it, or just floods with gas, whatever, I should be able to pull the spark plugs out and clear the cylinders out simply by leaving the ignition off and just mashing this start button and it'll run the starter motor for me without me having to worry about the spark plug wires laying around and catching something on fire by sparking on some gas or something like that. So anyway, I don't recommend you guys do it that way, but in this instance, that's how I'm going to do it. And I will show you how to do it the way you should do it. So, first things first, your start switch, you're going to look at the back of it, and it's going to have a pair of terminals here and a pair of terminals here. The pair of terminals here, this is a positive and a negative, doesn't matter which one, which way you put it, but this is for the LED light that will be inside of your start switch. And these two right here are for your starter circuit. All right, let's get to wiring this thing up. So I'll flip it over like this and uh, start with our switched power and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my switched power which is when I say switched power this is the wire that will be turned on that will have 12 volts positive when this switch is turned on okay so now for convenience I'm going to run this wire straight over to the next terminal which, as you remember, I just told you that's for the LED light that is inside of the start switch. All right. Now, if you'll see, I've got a daisy chain here of connectors. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the switched power from here. It goes to the LED light, but it also provides power to all three of these switches. Okay, we've got that on. So now I hope you'll see that when the main power comes in here, so let's go ahead and hook that one up right quick. Now this is where mine deviates from yours. If you'll see here, I have got this one 10 gauge wire coming in and I've got it split to two 10 gauge wires right here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to, number one, it's going to 
supply power to the switch. So this will be the power coming from the vehicle right here. And I just wanted you to see all this is is just an eight gauge uninsulated crimp terminal. And I do have some heat shrink here that I will slip over that and insulate it. And the other part of the Y comes and it goes to the start switch. Now this is power coming in. I, you'll notice right away that I'm using the same color wires for basically all this heavy gauge stuff. That's because I only have one color of it, but I went to Harbor Freight and I bought some of this little uh, colored electrical tape so I could mark my wires to differentiate them from each other. All right, so we have main power in. Okay, this is your main power in. Now, if you're running this straight to a battery source, get yourself a fuse holder. This is a must. I've seen people's cars burn down because they didn't have this simple little $2 fuse holder. In my instance, I'm hooking it straight to the vehicle's start system. So, I mean, it's already a fused and relayed circuit. So, no worries for me about that. Okay, so now we're going to come back over here and we're going to hook up the wire with the white tape on it which the reason why I put white tape on it in my instance is because the start signal wire, the one that actually sends power to the starter, is black and white. So I put white on there for this so it will be easy for me to remember what that goes to. So I'm going to tighten this screw out. Okay, we've got the main starting circuit wired together. So here's where I'm going to tell you what you should do. This is kind of dangerous because anybody right now can get in this vehicle and just mash that start button even with this off. And since this thing's got a manual transmission and the clutch safety switch has been bypassed, it can just take right off. Um, well, as long as they're holding this. So um, kids, you know, curious little kids can hop in there or somebody can just hop in there and just have, think it's funny to mash the start button while you're under the hood or something like that. So just don't do it this way. Don't do it this way. So how you should do it. How you should do it is since this is your main power coming in, in your instance, you would not have this Y piece right here. You would have one wire coming in and then you would have the wire coming out and it would go to this terminal here. Okay. And then you would jump these small wires off to all these others. Okay. And the reason for that is because what that will do is once this switch is turned off, then that means this is no longer going to work. Okay. So play it safe, wire it up the way you're supposed to. Take this wire, hook it down here, and then come off of here to run your LEDs and your three switches. Now you'll notice that these wires here are kind of small. Um, that's basically because all we're going to be using these switches for is to switch relays on and off. And to be honest with you, the relay doesn't take that much energy. That's what's good about a relay. You take a you take a small amperage load and you switch a large amperage load. Now, the relay that comes with these things, is, the wires are pretty dinky on these things. I wouldn't really use these for, I mean, if I had like, you know, a pair of cube LED lights or whatever, I'd probably use that or whatever. But the bad part about this one is, like I said before, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not sealed against weather. So it's not sealed against water. So, I mean, any water gets in there and it's going to corrode and it's not going to work anymore. These, on the other hand, I bought these separate off of Amazon and these are a weather pack type connector here. So let me show you that when they're not put together. So this is what it looks like when they're not put together. So they'll go together just like this. And this rubber seal right here seals out moisture from getting in here. And there's also a rubber seal right here to keep water from getting in past the wires. So spend a few extra bucks, get you something nice like this. Now for this starter, this wire will go to your starter relay. This will go to the signal wire that goes to your starter relay because you'll have Two big wires coming in your starter relay. Now your starter relay may be built onto the starter itself. 
some of the older school stuff like the Fords, they have a fender well mounted starter relay and this is what you would use to trigger that starter relay. And I've got a separate video of how to wire up a starter relay and I'll link it down here in the description. But anyway, since like I said, my vehicle basically still has all of the wiring intact and I'm just missing the key, all this stuff is gonna to go to the factory fused wiring in the, in the steering column. So it's gonna be easy for me. I'm gonna mount this in the slot where the radio used to be. Um, so, cause I'm, I'm not gonna need a radio for a race vehicle anyway. So anyway, so let's get down to the last part of it. Now we got, it's always a good idea to write down what this stuff is too. I mean, it just takes a simple piece of paper to write down what colors are what. That way later on, if you're out in the middle of the woods or you're on a, you're in the pits at a racetrack or something like that, you'll have a quick reference to look at to see what wires do what. I probably won't do that because I'm stupid. I'll just have to struggle like I always do. Okay, so there we go. Now we got that. Now, one last thing. It almost is, it's almost done. We got one last wire to hook up and this will be a ground. And it's not a ground for a switch. It's not a ground for anything other than the two LED lights that are on this switch panel, which there's one on the end of this switch and there's one inside the start switch. So basically you'll see this terminal that sticks off the bottom of the main power switch. You're going to want to put that there and you're going to want to take the other side and hook it to the negative part of the LED terminal. So we just slip that fork terminal right in there. Okay. So then this wire, all it does is provides a ground for the two LEDs in the switch panel and that's all that does. So let's go back over what we got here real quick. So right now, the way I've got mine set up is the way I personally want to do mine. So now it is switch the main power on, the LED light comes on in this switch right here, the LED will come on in here and these three switches here will be energized, okay? That's because you're switching this on and you're providing the 12 volts coming in and you're providing the 12 volts coming out. Now, like I mentioned before, these wires here are pretty small because they're only going to be triggers for a relay. Now, these switches here, they're, they'll probably handle maybe 10 amps. So, I mean, if you've got like an LED light strip for the interior of your car or whatever. I mean, you could probably get away with wiring this directly to that because it's really not gonna draw that much amperage. But if you've got one of them big old light bars or whatever, then yeah, you're gonna want to use a relay. What I'm gonna use for mine, I'm gonna use one for an electric fan and then I've got these two left over so I can add things later on as I need them. So guys, that's really all there is to it. I hope this helps you out. If you've got any questions, put them down there in the comments and I'll be glad to answer and help you out any way I can. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.